to the Lord, beautiful, beloved sex of the Most High God. I pray all is well, and you have been loving Jesus on today. And today is Wednesday, and I like to say it's been a wonderful, watchful, wise Wednesday, especially if you have been willing and obedient to what God has called you to do, especially on today. I'm reminded of the passage of scriptures out of Psalms 133, starting at verse 1, it said, Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ornament upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, that went down to the skirts of his garments as to do of Hermon, and as to do that descended upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessings, even life forevermore. So it is such a wonderful blessing for us to dwell, be dwelling together, although we're not in the church, but we're live stream. So I'm so grateful that you all took the time out of your busy schedule to come in and just fellowship with us in the Word of God on today. And so as always, you know, we open up with our canopy of protection. And if you have your Bibles with you, turn to Psalms 91. It's never grievous, but for us it's always safe. And one thing about it, when we get the Word of God really within us, not just being hearers of the Word, I always say being doers of the word as according to James. You know, miraculous and marvelous things begin to happen in our life. We have life-changing experience because we take the word of God serious and know that it is real. Because as I've said often, God hastened over his word to perform it. And so if you have Psalms 91, we're going to um, recite or read the declaration um, I'm sorry, the canopy of our protection. Psalms 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the north and pestilence. He shall cover thee with His feathers and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and butler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noon's day. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder. The young lion and the dragon shall not trample under feet. Because he has set his love upon thee, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. And if you believe that tonight, even without me saying to give God praise, it should be an automatic on the inside of you. That you want to give God praise because of the canopy protection that he has provided for all of us, his children, his people, those that name the name of the Lord, who has called upon the Lord according to Romans 10 and 19, that we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead. But with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So I pray that you and your family have gathered together and with expectation, ready to receive the word of God from our one and only Bishop Lewis.
But praise the Lord, saints of the Most High God. How's everybody doing today? I trust that you all are standing on top with all things under your feet. I'm doing well. We all doing well here at the Lewis Home, and we're grateful to be here coming to you in your homes live streaming again, bringing forth the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we know it's all about Jesus. It's all about him. Amen. We want you to go ahead and take a minute now and go ahead and do your witness. Go ahead and hit that share button. Go ahead and share uh, your, um, your, your, your Facebook and everything that you normally do to uh, bring everybody else online with you or either just to get the message out there. So go ahead and take a minute to do that. Because, see, one of the things I'm going to be sharing with uh, today in the, in, the, in the lesson is that this is how we continue to gather and to congregate. Remember the message I spoke on um, Sunday. We are scattered but not shattered. And because of this modern technology that we have today, we can still assemble ourselves together as saints of God, viewing in, hearing the word of God. And you know something? Listen, it is sad when a church has a thousand members and only approximately 150 or 200 screams in. It's sad when a church have three or 4,000 members and, it's, and only approximately two or 300 scream in. So what, what is that telling you? You know, on Bible study and sometime on church and even doing this live streaming, we get the Christians. But then again, when you go to church, you got the crowd. So are you a Christian or are you just part of the crowd? Because remember, it was the crowd that said, uh, uh, well, they called themselves Christian. They gathered together when Jesus was making this triumphant entry into Jerusalem. They were saying, Hosanna, 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 Hosanna to the king. But that same crowd that said Hosanna was the same crowd that said, crucify him, crucify him. And so the thing is, people of God, we got to learn how to come together. If you are a member of a church, and I'm not talking about Rainbow Word Christian Outreach Ministry members, I'm talking about everybody who's listening and viewing in on this uh, live stream of this evening on uh, doing our Bible study. You should be streaming in and listen to the Word of God. And for all the members, now this really for the members now I'm talking to, if you are a member of Rainbow Word Christian Outreach Ministry and you're not viewing or streaming in, so that means you must be out there flapping. Right. Now, I'm not talking about people who got the work. I'm not talking about people who are sick and shut in and maybe at the hospital. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about people who, I'm talking about people who, who can uh, stream in, who can do this, uh, this teaching, and they're not doing it. What you're doing now, you are forsaking the assembly. And we don't want to do that. That's right. We don't want to forsake the assembly. We want you to join in as the word come forth. Because this is time where the pastor is still preaching. The pastor is still teaching. Just the same as you show up on Bible study. And it's sad that some people don't even come to Bible study. And they can come to Bible study. And this is, this is sad. It's sad when you uh, don't come to Bible study, but it's another thing, you know, you come to Bible study and then you hear that word. This is Bible study night. And on Sunday, that's our Sunday where we come and hear the word of God. Yes. And now I know, I understand that people are saying, well, we're not singing, we're not doing the praise and worship, we're not doing the dancing, we're not doing all the other mechanics in the church. See, people know the mechanics. But do you really know about Christ and know about the Messiah? Do you really know how to worship? Do you really know how to? Well, see, here's the thing. This is, you know, in the early church, they didn't have all of that. They might have sung a song. They might have. But most of the time, when they came in, they bought the book. And the apostles, they began to open up the book, begin to read and begin to expound on the scripture. Many times the apostle Paul, when he went, he went. He didn't have no praise and worship team. He didn't have no dancers. No, this sure. is what we came up with yes. in our modern day church. Yes. 
Yes. But the main thing that everybody needs to be doing is hearing the word of God. So go ahead and take a minute and share. And I just wanted to say that because it's important and it's imperative that every member of the church and every member of the body of Christ need to be live streaming and, and listening in, or either if you are going to church now, if the church, is, the church doors are open, you know, go to church and only, you know, continue to practice the uh, social distance, you know, the mask, the, you know, the, 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 the six feet and all that stuff, you know. But nevertheless, I have a t teaching I want to do on tonight. And once again, um, we bring you greetings from Rainbow Word Christian Outreach Ministry. We thank God for each and every one of you. We appreciate you live streaming and, and listening and viewing in. We hope that you receive something from the Word of God on tonight. Now I want you to turn your Bibles to the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 22 through 25. And this is where we're going to be doing our teaching from tonight. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 22 through 25. And I will be reading from the King James Version. Are you there? I hope and pray that you are. Because we get ready to read the scripture. Let us read. It says, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith. I hope your Bible says the same thing. And have, it says, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promise. And we're going to be focusing on that particular verse on tonight. However, I'm going to be doing some expository teaching again on all these uh, scriptures. And it says, And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking, there it is, the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is. Some people not assembling themselves. Some people not going to church. Some people are not live streaming yes. in while their pastors is teaching and their pastors are, are preaching. It says, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exalting one another. And so much the more as you see the day approaching. Talking about the day of the Lord is coming. And may the Lord add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers to, of his holy word. And all of God's people say, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And the teaching, I'm taught taught in this teaching tonight, holding fast the profession of our faith. Holding fast the profession of our faith. You know, our profession of faith is what we say and what we believe. So when we're talking about holding fast, and see, there's a reason why, you know, uh, uh, the writer said, said this. He said, holding fast the profession, because some have allowed their profession of faith to slip. And the Bible talks about that. We should not let these things slip. So we got to hold fast. Whatever you've been saying, whatever you've been praying, whatever you believe, you got to hold fast to this. And so we got to hold fast. Our professional faith, and understand this, our professional faith is what we say and what we believe. So you got to hold fast to what you believe. If you've been saying it, you've been believing, hold fast to that. Have hope, never doubt, never give up. Now, if this goes back to the four spiritual laws of faith uh, that we discussed in Mark's Gospel, chapter 11, verse 22 through 26, where Jesus said, uh, have faith in God. And we know that Jesus is the person of our faith. And I'm not going to so much expound on this a little bit because I want to make a point here. Jesus said, have faith in God. And we know that's the person of our faith. Jesus Christ, God, he's the object of our faith and he's the object of our prayers. And then that second spiritual law of faith is the principle of our faith. That's the law of confession. And that's what I'm going to talk about too because notice what he said here. And he says, and whosoever shall say unto this mountain, 
be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he said. Now, here's the thing. You can have whatsoever you say if you believe and don't doubt. But the minute you start doubting, what's going to happen is now you're allowing that profession of your faith to slip. That's why you need to hold fast. And I know sometimes when we see situation and we're trying to figure out how in the world this is going to change, how he's going to change, how she's going to change, how's my situation is going to change. When would this pandemic be over? Listen, people, don't worry about that stuff. David said, I will not concern myself with things that are too high or that are above me. So we're going to leave that up to God. Only thing we have to do is look to the hills from whence cometh our help. Because our help comes from the Lord who has made the heavens and the earth. He knows how to control the pandemic. If you go back to 2 Chronicles chapter 7, read verse 12, 13, and 14. And it'll tell you, and especially verse 13, he said, if I can stop the rain and shut up the heavens from sending the rain, he said, if I can send the locusts to destroy the crop, he said, if I can send a plague or epidemic to destroy, he said, but if my people who are called by my name. Now, see, here's the thing. In that verse 13, God said, listen, I can control the rain, I can control the locusts, and I also can control a pandemic. I can control that. So what is happening right now, don't you worry about it. God, he's not controlling everything, but he's still in control of everything. God knows how far he wants anything to go. Right. Even when it came to the life of Job, yes. he told Satan exactly what he will allow him to do. He said, I'll even allow you to touch his flesh with boils. Just don't touch his soul. You ain't going that far. You ain't going to take his life. See, God knows how far to let things go. That's why the Bible tells in 1 Corinthians 10 and 13, There has no temptation taken you, but such that is coming to man. God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the same temptation make a way for you to escape it so you still be able to bear it. God knows how far to go and allow things to happen to you. Even with my situation, when I was hospitalized with COVID-19, God knew how far to allow this thing to take me. It was his grace that was keeping me. Amen. And I'm still standing strong, still got my health, and I'm only here by the grace of God. And God, if God gives me long life, to him be glory. If God decide to take me home, guess what? And he's not wrong with being with the Lord. Paul said, absent from this body, present with the Lord, present with the Lord. And no, I'm not pre preaching my funeral. I'm just saying, either way it goes, people of God, we win. We yes, don't lose. Yes. We cannot lose with Christ. Hallelujah. No matter how we look at it. If we have Christ in this world, there is no way we can lose. Now watch this. Notice what the scripture says. He that findeth his life in this evil, crooked, perverse world, he will lose it. But he that lose his life for Christ and the gospel's sake, he will find it. You can't go wrong with Christ. Things go better with Jesus Christ. You know they had the old slogan, things go better with Coca-Cola. Uh-uh, things go better with Jesus Christ. You know why? Because the scripture says in Romans, God, the Roman, in Romans gospel, I'm about to say gospel, it's still the gospel. All the Bible is the gospel. But in Romans chapter 8, verse 28, notice what it says. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the call according to his purpose. It still works. He works it out for, for our good, but he does it for his purpose. Everything is for the purpose of That's God. Right. That's right. Thou has created all things and then all things for Amen. his purpose and for his pleasure. They are and were created. Yes. I believe that's Revelation chapter 4 verse 12. He created everything for his pleasure, for his purpose. And it's God that's working in us both to will and to do his good pleasure. Not ours. Not ours. I think that's Philippians. If you're reading Philippians chapter 2 somewhere around verse 13. It said, for it is God that working in us. That's right. That's right. You know why God put his spirit in us? 
Not so we can walk around so holy and anointed and act like we got it going on. Act like we that and a bag of chips and two uh, bologna sandwiches. But listen here, people, God. God put his spirit and allow his spirit to be in us so we can carry out his will. Carry out his purpose. That's right. Because That's it's right. all about him. Why you think he saved Paul? He said, Paul, now listen here. You're going to carry out my will. You know, I know you were doing your thing, imprisoning a Christian and killing some. But now you're going to do my thing. This is about me. It's not about you. It's about me now. Because I need you to get the gospel. I need many people to believe that I am the Christ. I am the Son of God. And you know what the Bible says? What the work of God is? The work of God is to believe on the name of the Son of God. That is the work of God. And it's in, your, it's in the Bible. It's in the scripture. The work of God is to believe on the only begotten Son of God. Jesus Christ is to believe on the Lord. That's the work. So when we get, get other people to believe, guess what? That's the work. And that's the main thing. And for us to believe, that's the work. Because, see, now we become, we are changed from a sinner to a saint. Because that's the work. And it's what God wants all of us to do is to believe. And see, if you go back to the cross, when Jesus was crucified, the man on the left, man on the right. See, that man on the right, see, he got involved with the work. Because he said, Lord, when you enter into your kingdom, remember me. Jesus said, today you will be with me in paradise. See, that was the work. And see, that's the main thing the Lord wants us to do is to believe on him. And you got the whole fast to that profession. Don't worry about it. I know even right now some of you look in that situation and say, you know what? You know, how long will my finance last? Will I have a job? Uh, will, will, I be, will, will my loved ones get saved? Will my children come to know the Lord? Some of them involved in other religion. People listen. The Bible still tells me in Proverbs 21 and 1 that the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. As the rivers of water, he turns it wherever he wants it to go. It doesn't matter what religion a person has got themselves in. God knows how to bring them out, and but only thing you need to do is go down in the valley. Yeah, right. What valley I'm talking about? I'm talking about Nebone Valley. Just get down in Nebone Valley and start praying to the Lord and asking the Lord for salvation for that loved one, whether it's a son, daughter, grandchild, niece, nephew, uncle, uncle, uncle or aunt, or either it's a grandparent, in-laws, outlaws, any kind of laws. And God knows how to change them all because he wrote the laws. And so all the laws came from him. The laws came through Moses that God gave it to him. But grace and truth came through Jesus yes, Christ. Sir. Yes, sir. And so it's important for us to understand the principle of our faith. The law of confession. Say what Jesus said. Hold fast to that profession. What did he say? He said, if you speak to the mountain. And we know that is a difficult task if we look at it with the natural eye. Now, I'm looking at this big, large, huge, immense mountain. And I'm supposed to say a few words. And this thing's supposed to move. Jesus said, it can't happen if you don't doubt. He said, the same way I spoke to that fig tree and it dried up by the root, from the root up. He said, you speak to the mountain, the mountain would do the same thing. Because it's never ever about how much faith you really need. It's not about the volume of your faith, but it's always about the object of your faith. Who you put your faith in, that's why Jesus said, have faith in God. To see, your prayers cannot get your faith to work, but your faith can get your prayers to work. Right. That's right. how it works. See, some of us are praying and saying, okay, prayer, you got to make my faith work. No. Remember what the scripture says. I'm going to give you two of them. Very familiar passages of scripture that you already know. Hebrews 11 and 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Hebrews 11 and 6. But without hope faith. It is impossible to please him. The scripture did not say, but without prayer, it is impossible to please him. The Bible speaks about prayer. Pray without ceasing. Men ought always to pray and not to faint. 
And the Bible tells us to pray always. And we should pray, fast and pray. So the Bible talks about prayer. However, notice this. Hebrews 11 and 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. He that cometh to God must believe that God exists, that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Some of you wonder, will your situation change? Will your health get better? Now listen to me, people of God. Some of these things are based on condition. Condition if you're going to change your diet. Condition if you're going to eat right. Condition if you're going to get out and exercise. Condition if you're going to quit eating two or three gallons of ice cream at night. <laughs> and boy, I love me some ice cream. I do. <laughs> Hagen dazs is my favorite. You give me some strawberry Hagen dazs I can eat it all day, but I cannot just eat that and just say, Lord. And you know, this is what some Christians do. They get that, they get that ice cream or that cake. And those sneakers, and especially those Krispy Kreme donuts. I know some of y'all getting hungry out there. Don't you turn that live stream at all. You keep that live stream on. Do not try to run down to Dunkin' Donuts and try to get some donuts right now. Don't you run to that store and try to get some ice cream. You wait till this live stream is uh, it's over. But just think about it. Some, some people try to get some donuts and try to pray the calories out of them. Lord, in the name of Jesus. Bless these donuts. I pray that none of these donuts will put an ounce on me in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Try to eat the whole box. It don't work like that, people. God. Hello. Wake up. Wake up. See, there's a big thing between faith, foolishness, and presumption. And see, that's foolish. And, and you know, it, to even pray something like that. Because those calories are not coming out of that donut if you eat it. Okay? Just face the facts. However, my point is, is that, you know, there are some things that based on condition and for us to see the changes. And see, it's like this. If I want a job, I can't sit at home. Don't even get online or don't even get out and get in the car the with a resume and don't even fill out an application. Yes, sir. See, if I don't do those things... Who out there are going to recognize me? Some of you are going to say, well, God can do everything. God can do all things. And I can do all things through Christ that strengthened me. Sure, sure enough, he can. God can have somebody come knock on your door and give you and say, do you want a job? Can God do that? Yes, he can. However, God is not going to defy the laws of this earth. So if it requires you to go fill out an application, if it requires you to also... Uh, you know, turn a resume, you need to do that. Because that's how you're going to get seen. And then, then there may be somebody out there that knows you, and you probably got laid off from your job. They might know you just because you decided to get out and go by faith. And they say, hey, you still working at this place? And you, you said, no, I just got laid off, and you know, I'm trying to find a job. They say, hey, come in. All because you got up and went out. Now, look what's going to look what happens. Somebody recognized you. God had that person to be there at the right place at the right time. And now you got a job or you got a job interview or you or they introduce you to the, uh, the boss or the person who does the hiring. And so all kind of things, anything can work and all things work together for good. But God works it out for our purpose. Remember what James said. Faith without works is dead. However, you still got to hold fast to your profession. Amen, amen. You got to hold fast to your profession. Yes, sir, you yes. got to keep saying it. You got to keep praying it. You got to keep believing it. You yeah. got to even uh, just visualize it in your mind. Yes, sir. You got to meditate on this thing. Yes, Whatever you do, people of God, just don't give up. Now, watch this. Remember, we talked about this. We was talking about the four spiritual laws. Like I said, I'm not going to get into them because I talked about that on this past Sunday. However, notice this in verse uh, 24, Mark 11 and 24. It says, "Now what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you what receive them, and you shall have them." He said, "Believe it. Believe that you receive them, and you shall have them." Now watch this. So when I pray. And then I know the first thing you're going to say, well, how do I know it's God's will? 
Well, pray. Pray and believe. What things soever you desire. Do you have a desire for it? Well, see, how can my desire fall in the will of God? Well, the scripture says, what things soever you desire. Yes. The Bible says, if you delight yourself on, in the Lord, he will give you the desires yes, of your heart. And see, those of you out there just praying for all that spiritual stuff, that's fine. Man, I got it. You know, I've been preaching the gospel now uh, uh, 40 years. Preaching the gospel, teaching the gospel all over the world. I got the spiritual stuff. I need some natural stuff too. I need, that's what I need. I need some natural stuff. Now, it's not like we don't have anything. I don't have anything. I got just about all I need. And I know there's probably over, uh, uh, I, I can't even say how many people in this world wish they only had a quarter of what I have. And I'm not saying that, that, you know, I'm no Bill Gates or anything like that. But what I'm trying to say is that we're blessed. You know, it's not like we, we walk around and like, and you know, and I've, I've been there living from paycheck to paycheck. Yes. That's not good. Yes. And I pray that no one lives from paycheck to paycheck. Grandma, you know, that's why I always pray for you all that you all never, ever have any lack in your home, your finance, your yeah. health, everything. Even yes, when it comes Lord. to your children, grandchildren, the generation to come. And I pray this for everybody all yes. over the world. Yes. However, people, God, we've got to learn how to hold fast to our profession. And now remember, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe. But see, the key thing is don't doubt. Remember what he said. Whoso shall say unto this mountain, speak unto this mountain, be thou removed. In other words, there's not a problem that's too big for God. There's not a problem that's too big for us. See, see, God, he knows how to handle all problems. And he already told in 1 Peter 5 and 7, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. He knows how to handle your problems. He knows how to handle your cares. He knows how to handle your troubles, all your anxieties, everything. He knows how to do it. And see, I know sometimes people sit there wondering, well, you know, will I lose my job during this pandemic? You know what? As long as we trust the Lord, God's going to make sure yes. that you will never, ever be without anything. Listen to me, people of God. You're going to always have. God knows how to provide. And, and those who put their faith in God, God does not ignore them. And if he can bring water out of a rock, Come on, sir. if he can feed to, uh, anywhere between 2.5 to 3 million people in a desert, if he can take care of the children of Israel 40 years in the, in the wilderness, their feet did not swell, yes. their clothes did not even rot off them. And if he did that, God knows how to keep us. He knows how to feed us and protect us. But at the same time, people of God, and like I said, some things based on condition, but you still hold fast to your profession. Yes. What things soever you desire, if you desire your loved ones to be saved, if you desire just for a better, you know, just a better lifestyle, some things are based on condition. Remember that now. You got to change. Some things you just got to change. Good, you cannot sit there and say, I'm praying this and God, thou see no, I don't see any changes. The reason why, because you haven't changed. Come on, sir. And see, one thing about change, let me say this about change. You know, it's one thing trying to get people to change. And see, people don't mind change, but it's hard to get people to change. When you try to get them to change, that's when the, the resistance comes. Yes, sir. Wait a minute, okay. Now, you could change the order of service, but don't change don't, don't change where I'm sitting. Yes. I've always been sitting on this front row right here on this third chair. Come on, picture. All right, don't, 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 don't do that. Because yeah. if you tell them to get up and move, oh, boy, they next move will be out the door, out the church, and looking for another church where they can sit on the front row in that same old third seat where somebody got it already occupied. But nevertheless, people of God, let me go a little further. Let me give you some uh, a little Greek tonight. Coming uh, according to the Bible, uh, Bible's complete expository dictionary, the Old and New Testament, and I'm talking about the, the, these words "profess" and "profession." Listen to this. Uh, these words, what it means, and here's one, um, and it's, it's, it's pronounced "epangelo." 
Epangelo. Now I'll spell it for you. E P A N G E L L O. Epangelo. Now, this word here, it means to announce, proclaim, profess. And it's also rendered to profess. So this word, Epangelo, that's what it means to announce, proclaim, profess, to profess. Now, here's another word. Now, listen to this. Homo logeo. Homo logeo. That word is, is spelled H O M O L O G E O. Homo logeo. Now, one of the things about this particular word, it carries the same connotation as profess and say. Now, it's translated profess. Now, remember what Jesus said in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 23. After he said, everybody who said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven, except he that do the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? In thy name cast out devil. In thy name there are many wonderful words. He said, many will say to him these things. And then he said, and then will I profess unto them. I will say unto them, depart from me, ye your work, ye that work iniquity, I will profess unto them. So this word homo logeo also means profess, and it also carries the same connotation, meaning confess. Profess and confess. So when we talk about profess, profess or profession, or confess or confession, we're talking about to say or to speak the same thing. Now, here's another word. And this word here is homologaya, homologaya, homologaya. And this word is spelled H-O-M-O-L-O-G-I-A, homologaya. And this word means confession, which is also translated profession and profess. Only in the King James Version. And it also means confess. So I've given you these words because when we're talking about holding fast to our profession, that also means hold fast to your confession. And see, we got to learn how to continue to speak. Remember, when God created the heavens and the earth, all he did, God said and he saw. He said and he saw. And I believe, and I know there's a lot of you out there that have said things and you watched that thing manifest. Many times I said things and I watched it manifest. Many times I spoke to other people and told them, and it, this, this could have been a word of wisdom, it could have been a word of knowledge, it could have been prophecy by the Spirit of God, and I said to them, this is what the Lord said. If I said the Lord said, see, God is involved. Yes. And there's time I spoke things to a person and it happened. And I'm not talking about bad things. And see that people are so eager to curse somebody. And the Bible said, don't curse. The Bible even said, listen, love your enemies. That's right. Pray for them that despitefully use you. Don't curse them, but bless them. It said, and the scripture says, bless them that do what? Curse you. So if they curse you, you bless them. You know what Michelle Obama said? If they go low, we go high. That's what we're going to do. They go low, try to curse us, we're going to go high and bless them. And because we're going to go on high. We're going to go to the God of the most high. And that's how we're going to go high and bless them and let God handle them. And then the next thing you know, that curse is going to be like a boomerang. Yeah, you tried to curse me, but it came back to you. See, you went low, but we went high. Can I get a hallelujah? Hallelujah. Let me see y'all. Put hallelujah on the screen. Let me see all the hallelujahs on the screen. Give me some amen. Thank you, Jesus, or something, y'all. Come on, let me feel it in the spirit. Let me keep going. All right, let me take a moment and... Um, 
do some expository. Uh, uh, well, let me do this exposition here in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 22 through 25, uh, since I have a little more time left. And let's go. We're going to break this thing down. We're going to dissect it a little bit. Going back to Hebrews chapter 10, verse 22 through 25, let's look in verse 22. It says, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. In other words, let me give you this, what the Good News Translation says. It says, let us uh, come near to God with a sincere heart and a sure faith. A sure faith, that's a genuine faith. In other words, full assurance of faith, meaning that no doubt cannot even creep in. It has no space. It's airtight. Your faith is so it is so airtight in your heart and in your spirit to no doubt can creep in. You have the full assurance of faith where to the point now you are fully persuaded, fully persuaded, excuse me, I'm trying to say two words at one time. You are fully persuaded that what God has promised, he was able also to perform. And see, when you get to that point where you say, I'm fully persuaded, what you're saying, doubt, you can't creep in. I don't care what you say. I don't care what's happening. I don't care what's going on. Doubt cannot creep in. You know why? Because I have the full assurance of my faith, and I'm not just only that. I am fully persuaded. But when you get to the point where you say, I know, what you, when you say, I know, what you're saying, I already done this, I've done the study. I done the research. I done did the exegesis. I done I done did the hermeneutics. I done did everything. I done did I done study. I done interrogated. Oh, I done did everything to get all the information, and now I'm at a point for to bring forth a conviction. So now I know. It's kind of like what happened uh, when. Uh, remember the woman that was at the well that Jesus met, the Samaritan woman. And after she had the conversation with Jesus, and then all of a sudden, she ran back to the town and told the men, Men, come and see a man who told me all things about myself. Yes. Is not yes. this the Christ? Hallelujah. So Jesus went into the town, and they saw him. Jesus abode with them two more days. And now this is what they said to the woman. They said, now listen, we believe not because of what you said. Come on, sir. We know because we heard him and seen him with our own eyes. Yes. This is the Christ. Nobody else can convince us uh, any other way. Okay. Now we know. And see, that when you know that you know that you know, nobody else cannot try to de 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 deter you from what you know. Right. Because you know. And when you to that point where you say you know, I don't care who try to come oh, and sir. try to tell you anything different. You know why? Because you know. You know. And watch this. Going back to Romans 8 and 28. And we know. And you know what? We know that all things. Come on, bitch. <laughs> we know all things work together. I know this. Yes, sir. Yes, and we know sir. all things work together for good. And we know all things work together for good to them that love God. You know what? If I love God, you know what God would do? He'll manifest himself to me. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them who are the call. You know who are the call? Come on. Not the fivefold ministry. Right. Not the ministers. The call is everyone who have believed and received salvation I mean, and accepted Jesus Christ yes, as Lord yes, and Savior sir. because we all got the same call. Hallelujah. Now, I'm not saying the calling is the same, but we got the same call from the same one who, who called us. He called us. The Lord called us. He called us into this salvation. He called us into this new life. That's why the scripture tells us in 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, Therefore, if, 
If, based on this condition, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Now, I told you, only thing you got to do is love God. If you love God, all things work together for your good. And watch this. If you love God, God will manifest himself to you. Yes. The scripture tells us in St. John chapter 14, verse 21. Notice this, he that hath my commandments on, and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my father, and I will love him and will manifest myself in him. That's How do we word. love God? Keep his commandments. Hallelujah. That's all we have to do. Hallelujah. Now, that doesn't mean we're going to be perfect. It doesn't mean we'll never sin. It doesn't mean our thoughts, our actions, our days, mm -hmm. our words won't, you know, won't get distorted on the way. It doesn't mean none of that. Yes, sir. Because we're going to fail. Because we're not in a perfect world. Yes. We're not in a perfect body. We don't have the perfect mind. Yes. But the Spirit of God searches all things, yea, even the deep things of God. But the one thing, if you keep His commandments, you keep His word, yes. God says, I'll manifest myself yes. to you. Yes. And when you to that point where you know, you know, you have the full assurance of your faith, this is going to work out for my good. You know what, I, and what, I, I, let me just say this. This is a, a, pre, a precursor to something to come, to come later on. You know, let me tell you something about adversity. I talked about it, you know, when I was sharing with you about what I was going through. But let me tell you something. One thing I've learned about adversity, and it, even, uh, let me just say this first. God will take adversity and use it for his purpose and work it out for your good. Yes. You know, sometimes I know people think that when adversity hit us, it's to take us out, take us under. Come on, sir. You see, but it's not, it's not that. See, God is not allowing these things to happen just to kill us. I mean, we got the devil. I mean, we, we don't need God to kill us. Because God, he does, he does what? He gives life. We know Satan threefold ministry and according to John 10 and 10 is to steal, kill, and to destroy. Jesus said, I come that you might have life and might have it more abundantly. Now, here's the thing. Here's my point. When we see adversity, or uh, when adversity hit us, sometimes we be like, where is God? God, why you let this happen to me? Don't start asking those questions. Start saying, what is it I'm supposed to learn from this? Sometimes the Lord allowed your enemy to, to chase you. All right. But you know what he's doing? He's chasing you towards your destiny. And when you get to your destiny, the Lord go ahead and take your enemy out. As the children of Israel, that's what happened to them in the Red Sea. So while, the, while Pharaoh uh, uh, and his army thinking that they got the children of Israel locked in, see what, what the, uh, see, the children of Israel deliverance became the destruction of the Egyptians. And see, mm. even though they might have been the bait, but they were not the catch. All right, all right. And see, sometimes God will, will allow us to be the bait, but we're not the catch. Your enemy is the catch. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And sometimes situations may come up, may pop up in your life. But if you have the full assurance of your faith and you draw near yes. to the Lord with a true heart and with that full assurance, God works everything out for your good but for his purpose. Notice what else it says. Having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure, with pure water. In other words, so let us come near to God with a sincere heart and sure faith with hearts that have been purified from a guilty conscience. Mm. You know what have what caused our guilty conscience is uh when we before we came to the Lord, we was out there doing everything under the sun, everything that we, that we thought we were big and bad enough to do. Mm -hmm. And then now when Christ came in, he changed us. You know, and then now our conscience, our heart doesn't condemn us anymore because mm. we are made right with God. 
we're justified through him. And I think Romans 5 and 1 said, therefore being justified with Christ. You know, we have peace with God through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Therefore being justified by faith. That's what it says. Therefore being justified by faith. See, our faith justified us and put us in right standing with God through Jesus Christ. Therefore being justified by faith. We have peace with God through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And so now, it says, uh, you know, uh, he has purified, uh, you know, from a guilty conscience and with bodies washed with clean water. Now, in other words, listen, we have a significant privilege with our new life in Christ. Now, what he's saying here in a nutshell we have personal access to God through, through Christ and can approach Him without an elaborate system. What's the elaborate system? You know, some people try to approach God and try to flatter Him and wherein God already knows our hearts. He knows what we think in 10 years from now. God knows what we're already thinking about tomorrow. See, you don't have to come with some elaborate system and think you're trying to win God over. You can't win God over. You see, on. you can't even come and, and, and try to say all the names of God. Oh, uh, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, El Shaddai. You know, you can't, you, I mean, you don't have to do all of that. Father, in the name of Jesus. Because you know what? Listen, we have access to God through Jesus Christ. We have access to God through Him. So we don't need any elaborate system. We don't have to come up with some other scheme and try and think we need to get God's attention. Well, you don't even have to try to fast. Well, I don't need to fast 21 days to get God's attention. No, you can fast, but I'm going to use my faith. You can starve yourself to death, but I'm going to eat. I'm going to eat right, and I'm going to use my faith. So the thing is, people of God, listen to me. Only thing we have to understand that we have a personal asset, access to God through Jesus Christ. And we can approach Him. And we don't have to approach Him with some leverage system. But we can approach Him because why? Jesus caused the veil of the temple to rent from the top to the bottom. Yes, sir. Yes, and we sir. all have access yes, sir. to the Holy of Holies. So we, can, we got access to him. Verse 23, I know my time is getting short. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. For he is faithful that promise. This is our scripture. In other words, let us hold firmly to the hope we profess. Because we can trust God to keep his promise. So listen, we are to hold firmly to the hope we profess. Listen. If you are ready to profess something to God, you can trust God that he will keep his promise. But you got to hold fast. Men are always to pray and not to faith. faith. Hold fast. Persevere. You got to hold fast. Don't let go. Don't let it slip. I'm going to keep my faith. Abraham had to wait 14 years. But he held fast. The Bible says he was against hope, but yet he believed in hope, according to Romans chapter 4. And then he, the Bible said, you know, but uh, uh, because he believed what God says, so shall thy seed be. That was God's promise to him. He held fast to that. So he was not being weak in faith, but he was being strong in faith. And he staggered not at the promises of God through unbelief, but he was strong in faith, giving glory to God, being fully persuaded that what God has promised, what he has promised, he was able also to perform. And it was imputed unto him for righteousness. In other words, it was counted unto him for righteousness, all because he believed God. Yes. And so this is saying, we may grow in faith. Notice this. Let us hold firmly to the, to the hope we profess. We can grow in faith. And we may grow in faith. We can overcome doubt and questions. Watch this. Because we can trust God to keep His promise. And we can have a deeper and a deepened relationship. And we can deepen our relationship with God. And we can have a deeper relationship with God. 
Now, verse 24. Let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. In other words, he said, let us be concerned for one another. You know, I told my wife up there, I said, I, I said honey, we, we need to call the saints. We need to call them. And, and listen, and I hope that you all are calling each other and checking up on each other. Yes. Lord. I hope that you all are doing that. Do that. Check up on one another. Let us not, those of us said, let us be concerned for one another to help one another to show love and to and do good and to do good and to do good works. Now, now what this is saying, we may enjoy encouragement from one another. And we can enjoy encouragement. The reason why it's important for us to hold fast to our profession because of these things. If we hold fast, we can continue to enjoy encouragement yes. from one another. Yes. That's why it's important. Hold fast. Yes. And now watch this, verse 25. Not forsaking the assembly Come on, of ourselves together yes, as the manner of some is, but exalting one another. And so much the more as you see the day approaching. Now listen, he said, let us not give up the habit of meeting together. Now, even though we may not be meeting in the church building, but we can still meet right That's here. That's right. That's so, right. Some of y'all typing your little, um, you know, notes and all of that stuff. Let me know, hey, you you meet with me. Pastor, I'm meeting with you right now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Some of you may, might be on Facebook. Uh, some of you might be uh, just on the on, on our website. And that's fine, well and dandy. That's good. But you are meeting with your pastor. Yes. And your pastor is meeting with you. We are now assembling yes. ourselves. Remember, we might be scattered, but we ain't Come shattered. On, sir. But we're now, even though we're scattered, guess what we're doing? Now we're assembling ourselves. How? Through live stream. Yes. Yes. That's why I told you take a moment to share. Let somebody else know. No, that's good, Notice this. Let us not give up the habit of meeting yeah, together good. as some are doing. This is what the Good News Translation said. Instead, let us encourage one another all the more since you see the day of the Lord is coming nearer. And if you look at it, people of God, we are in the last days. The Bible said in the last days, perilous times shall come. And you know, I just thought about this guy that was out in California who deliberately set the fire, uh, a fire, that big old fire that they got burning out there, out there right now. They're trying to uh, put out. This guy, he, he did it on purpose. Come on, man. Why would you do something like that? Man, these are dangerous times. It's people inside a lab release a virus. And look, over 20 million people has been affected. All over the world. Over a hundred some thousand that died. You know, we're in dangerous time. People are dying by the hands of our law enforcers. People are being shot, killed, women being raped. That, you know, all kind of crazy stuff. People coming up to your house dressed as a delivery person and shoots you. Shoots a family member. This is, we are in dangerous times. People, the Lord is coming. His, the Lord's coming is near. Yes, yes. That's why it's important that we continue to assemble ourselves. So we can be strengthened and encouraged. Because see, this is what happened. And it always happened. It never fails. Those who do not hear the word would be the first one trying to make it to the church. Or you trying to call the pastor, trying to call the elder, deacon, somebody. Y'all pray for me. I'm going through. Well, where you been in the past six months? We heard oh, from you. Come on, sir. Have you been live streaming with pastor? Well, oh, I've just been going through. I've just been trying to sit down and just rub my knee because it was hurting. Listen here. You better learn how to get some word in you. Remember what Jesus said in Matthew uh, 4 and 4 and Luke 4 and 4. Man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out the mouth of God. That's how we live, people. Listen, I got to bring this to a close. Now, what he is saying here, that we may worship together. We can worship together even through live streaming. We can worship together through all this modern technology. 
And you know, I've seen some of you just being out and about, First Lady and myself, we've seen some of you. And it's just so good when I see the same. I just want to give you a big hug sometime, but we have to do the old fist bump thing. <laughs> you know, when I went back to work, some of the people wanted to give me a big old hug and everything. I just had to give them no fist bump. Because, you know, you'd be so glad to see you, you know, because now we've done assembled. We got a chance to see each other. In closing, here's why we should hold fast the profession of our faith. In Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14 through 16, it says, Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Why we need to hold fast to the profession of faith? Because he said right here, seeing that Seeing then that we have a great high priest. Jesus is our high priest that is passing to the heaven. Jesus, the son of God, let us hold fast our profession. Now listen, and I end it with this scripture. 1 Thessalonians 5.24. It says, faithful is he that calleth you. Who also will do it? People of God, listen. Don't give up. Don't back up. Don't back down. As long as you don't back up, back down, God will always back you up. Don't give up. Because God is there to lift you up. And he's our helper. So no matter what we go through, Jesus is only a prayer away. That's why men are always to pray, not to faint, not to lose heart, not to give up. So people of God, hold fast to the profession of your faith. I trust that you have heard this message. Maybe there's someone out there who don't know Jesus. Pray this simple little prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you now. I want to be saved. I accept your love through Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God. I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross yes, for my sins. Yes, he was buried, and on the third day, God, you raised Jesus from the dead for my righteousness. Jesus, I do now, I confess you, I accept you, and receive you as my Lord, my Master, and my Savior. Thank you for saving me and keeping my name in the book of life. Now, if you pray that simple prayer, you have become born again. Yeah. The Bible said, if a man be yes, born Lord. again, he cannot see nor enter to the kingdom yes. of God. Yes, we who are born of our human parents belong to our human parents. But we who are born of the spirit of God, we belong to God. Now you had your spiritual birth. Remember your spiritual birthday. Write it down. Remember it just like your natural birthday. Because this is where you have started your new life. And if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. I'm getting ready to close out in prayer. I hope that you have, been, uh, have received this message and you, this message has been a blessing to you. And I just want you all to be encouraged. Hold fast to the profession of your faith. Let us pray. Father, we bless your name. We thank you. Thank you, Father, for keeping us, being with us, knowing that you just only a prayer way. And the only thing we have to do is believe 
and don't let doubt come in our hearts. Father, thank you right now for keeping us. Thank you, Father, for being with us. Father, we still pray against this coronavirus, against this COVID-19. I still pray for those who have been affected, infected by it, those who are bound in this thing. I pray for their healing. I pray that they come off those respirators alive and well and healthy. I pray for them right now. Even our, our first responders, our nurses and doctors who are in that hospital and even those who are assisting them, trying to provide health and healing to them. They don't have the cure, but the cure is in you. The cure is in Christ. And Father, we know only thing we have to do is trust you. And we ask that you do this right now. And Father, some of those doctors and some of those nurses have lost their lives. And God, because they were trying to save a life. But Father, we ask for your mercy to continue to be extended to all of us. And Father, we thank you. Father, we pray even for this upcoming election. God, we just ask that your hand be in, in, in it. And we thank you right now. And we pray for our leaders all over the world that they will lead a quiet and peace of, peaceable life. Father, that you would give them wisdom and knowledge and understanding in all they do and say or even think. And Father, we pray for our spiritual leaders all over the world. Continue to pray for the Christian House of Prayer. Thank you for Pastor Valerie Holcomb. Continue to give her wisdom, knowledge, and understanding and the spirit of counsel. And all she does and everything she says, bless her and be with her. All our CCI pastors all over the world, God, continue to use them mightily. Let the anointing flow on them and in them, throughout them, that it will go from the head to the beard to the skirt to the rest of the body, uh, uh, to the rest of the body of Christ. And we thank you for doing it. Father, I thank you right now for all the pastors here in the CSRA. God, those who continue to preach the word and bring uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ, use them mightily. I pray for all our covenant churches, even those churches that we cover. God, continue to bless them, keep them, be with them. And God, continue to provide for them. And we thank you for keeping their congregation, all their congregation together. And Father, we thank you right now. And we praise you right now. And we bless you right now. We thank you for all the families everywhere. Don't, uh, we pray that there be no lack in the family's home. God, especially those who trust you in giving up their tithes and offering. But God, you cause the sun to shine on the just as well as the unjust. You call the rain to come down on the good and evil. And God, we just ask that you continue just to keep each and every one. And we pray for the unsaved, that they come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, regardless of what religion that they believe. God, you can change them. There's only one faith, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God who's above all, through all, and in us all. And God, that's the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, Father, we thank you. We praise you. I thank you for my lovely wife. God, continue to keep her and bless her. And Father, I thank you because she's been a blessing to us. And we ask that your grace continue to be extended to her. God, thank you for my son Joshua as he continues to uh, do the live streaming for us. Thank you for Minister Lewis, bless him and keep him. And God, even my daughters, I ask that you bless them all and protect them all, be with them all wherever they go. And we bless you forevermore. Thank you for Sabre, LaCora, and Lexus. Continue to keep them and bless them all. And we bless you for my rainbow family. And we give your name, glory and praise. We thank you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Saints of God, I love you. Appreciate you. Remember, it's all about Jesus. And we're going to give you the benediction coming from June 24. Now to him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, to be glory and majesty, dominion, power, both now and forever. And we all say amen. amen. God bless you. Amen. Give yourself a hug. Love somebody. Hug Hallelujah. somebody. And really mean it. And remember, it's all about Jesus and it's all about him. God bless you. We love you. See you Sunday at 950. Start screaming in. And I'll be there at 11 o'clock for the Lord Terry is coming. God bless you.